Hello everyone and welcome to another video where we will be setting up the Windows subsystem for Linux on a Windows 10 machine. So the Windows subsystem for Linux is an optional feature of Windows 10 that will allow us to run Linux applications directly on a Windows machine. Now this video is effectively a walkthrough of the excellent article written by Chris Hoffman over at HowToGeek. To find this article, just go ahead and launch your favorite internet browser here and just go ahead and Google how to geek and then install and use the Linux Bash shell on Windows 10. And if you search for that, the very first hit you get ought to be this excellent article that we mentioned, which walks through all the steps necessary to get the Windows subsystem for Linux set up and Bash shell running natively here in Windows. So let's go ahead and start that process now. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is check to see if your machine is already running a 64-bit operating system or is capable to be upgraded to a 64-bit operating system. So to do that, let's go ahead and run settings and then come down to systems and then about. And what you're looking for here is you're looking for the system type here. And if yours says 64-bit operating system on an x64 based processor, you're ready to go with no changes needed. If yours says a 32-bit operating system on an x64 based processor, you're still in luck, although you will need to upgrade to a 64-bit version of Windows 10. So I'll let you check the internet for articles on how to do that. If you're on a 32-bit operating system with an x86 based processor, you're a little bit out of luck and you're not going to be able to install the Windows subsystem for Linux, unfortunately. So I'm going to assume that you've already got a 64-bit operating system on an x64 based processor, so we should be ready to take some next steps. All right, so what we're going to want to do now is go to the control panel and then click on programs or features and turn Windows features on or off. And what we're looking for here is we're looking for the Windows subsystem for Linux. Let's go ahead and put a check mark there and hit OK. And this may take a few minutes, so why don't I go ahead and pause the video and we'll come back when we see something happen. Okay, so that finished here and we may get the notification that you need to reboot your machine So let's go ahead and we'll do that now and I'll pause the video and come back when we're back online All right, and we're back after restarting so now that we've got the Windows subsystem for Linux installed Let's go ahead and in the start menu look for bash and there it is and we're going to get a little notification that although we've installed the Windows subsystem for Linux, we don't actually have a distribution of Linux yet. So as the window suggests, we can get this from the Windows Store. So let's go ahead and close this. And again, in the Start menu, let's just run the store. And in the Windows Store, let's look for a distribution of Linux. There's a bunch that you can choose from, but I think the most popular one is Ubuntu. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll search for Ubuntu. Here it is. Let's go ahead and get this. Uh, I don't think I need to sign in. Let's just go ahead and download. So uh, again, what we're going to do now is just install Ubuntu on this machine, which is the actual distribution of Linux. So we'll give this a couple minutes and we will be back when it completes. All right, so we're back and it looks like Ubuntu has installed. So let's go ahead and close the Windows Store. All right, so let's open the start menu again and look for Ubuntu, and here it is now that we've installed it. So let's go ahead and start this, and we should see a screen come up, and it says it's going to install, and it may take a few minutes. So again, let's just go ahead and pause the video, and we'll come back after this completes. All right, and we're back, and it looks like the Ubuntu installation was successful. And we see that the next thing we need to do is set up a Unix username. Now, please note that this actually doesn't need to be related or tied to your Windows credentials in any way. Uh, let's just go and pick a username of uh, Lum, and we're going to see it's going to ask us to next create a password for this user. So I'll go ahead and put my password in, and I'll retype this to confirm. Oh, sorry, I typed that wrong. There we go. So uh, we've now got a new Unix pass uh, user, and we're pretty much set and ready to go. 
All right, so one of the things that we might want to do right now is um, update all of our packages. So let's just go ahead and in the terminal type in sudo apt upgrade, or sorry, update. We're gonna do the update first, then we'll do the upgrade later. So let's go ahead and sudo apt update. We're gonna need our password. And we're gonna start updating our packages. So again, this might take a little while, so I'll go ahead and pause the video and we'll be back when this completes. All right, so the update completed. So let's go ahead and do the same thing, except we will now upgrade them. So sudo apt upgrade. And again, this might take a little while. Uh, well, yeah, we're gonna have to say yes here. So let's go ahead and say yes. And again, this might take a little while, so let's go ahead and pause the video and we will come back once this is completed. All right, and we're back and it looks like the upgrade's complete. So let's just go ahead and clear the terminal so we can start fresh and take a look at some of the features of the Bash terminal. All right, so one of the things we can do is just list the files and folders in the current directory. We'll just use the ls command to list those. We see there's nothing right now. We can go up a level with cd dot dot and list again. And we see there's now a single folder called lum, which was my username that we created. Let's go up one more directory and we should now be in the uh, top level directory here in the Linux file structure. So for example, if I ls again, we see we now have a lot more different folders and I know that we're in the top level because if I go cd dot dot one more time and list again, we're still in the same location. So uh, we can now basically do some simple manipulations here in Linux. One thing that might be interesting to note here is uh, in Bash, we're in a Linux environment, but again, we installed this distribution of Linux onto Windows. So these files actually exist on the Windows file structure here. If you're interested in finding out where all of these files and folders are, go ahead and start up a Windows Explorer. And let me see if I can just move these sort of side by side so we can hopefully see them simultaneously. And what we can do here is this uh, sub, uh, the Windows subsystem for Linux is actually stored here in your C drive. And then if you go to users, and then your username, so in this case, mine is lum. And now at this level, you may need to show hidden folders because we're trying to get to this app data folder here. And as you can see right now, it's sort of a uh, grayed or, or faded out. That's uh, Windows telling us that this is actually a hidden folder because basically Windows doesn't want you messing around with in this folder. So we have to be a little bit careful once we go inside this folder. So when we go inside this, I wouldn't be making any changes and uh, basically treat everything inside this as read only effectively. But if we want to still find these, let's go into the app data folder. We'll go to local and then we'll go to packages. And then, depending on which distribution of Linux you install from the Windows Store here, you'll find it in a different folder. Since we did Ubuntu, we're going to look for this one right here, this canonical group limited.ubuntu on Windows. And we'll go inside here. And then we're going to look for the uh, local state folder. And then the root fs. And if you look here, this file structure doesn't exactly mirror it, but this is where you will find those folders um, that we're seeing here in Bash. So for example, if you create something in the, uh, the home, LUM, and we saw this was empty earlier, but you see there's all these sort of hidden files and folders here. But if you were to create a folder here in Bash and Linux, you'll see it show up here in Windows. Again, word of warning here, never manipulate any of the Linux files within uh, the Windows environment. In other words, don't use Windows software to change any files or folders that you find in this Linux um, uh, file structure here. This can lead to uh, metadata problems or file corruption. So again, treat it as read only and only use this if you want to view files or copy them away or do something like that. Um, but besides that, I think this is a good place to stop because we basically successfully set up the Windows subsystem for Linux here on a Windows 10 machine. So. With that, uh, I think I'll end the video, and I hope to see you again in the future. Thank you so much.